Right now, the world is seeing more displaced people than ever before. Refugees flee their homes when it's too dangerous to remain in their country. The uprooting and uncertainty can take a toll on physical and mental well-being. Today, I'm chatting with Chris Ann Alvarez, a refugee support staff member about how your mission and service gifts care for refugees. Hello, Chris Ann. It's really good to be with you today. What are some of the key refugee work uh, that we're doing with Mission and Service? So Mission and Service is how they directly support the program is all of the staff. Um, the funding comes directly from MNS and our membership into the CCR, the Canadian Council for Refugees, that's directly funded by MNS and also our SAFI. So sponsorship agreement holder is what we are officially called. And basically what that is, is, um, is our agreement with Immigration Canada, so the federal government, to be able to sponsor refugees. And we're unique as well because we're a national SAW. Yeah, it's, it's huge. I mean, the agreement to be able to bring them here instead of going to another organization and knocking on doors, um, that's very unique. And it's a huge responsibility. So that's through MNS funds. There are always global and current events that impact refugees. Mm -hmm. um, what are the ones that at the moment are sort of top of mind and top of conversation for people doing refugee work? I think everyone knows the big three. That's Ukraine, Syria, Afghanistan. Those are the big ones, the most recent ones, the most covered by the news. Mm -hmm. However, I think as well, it's worth noting that most of the refugees are actually not from those three countries. Um, and a lot of those countries, uh, they're protracted, um, the refugee situation there, which means it's been going on for more than five years. Um, and unfortunately, not as um, not as sexy anymore, not not front page mm -hmm. worthy uh, for one reason reason or another. Um, Sub-Saharan Africa, that's twenty six percent of refugees, eighteen million people um, in refugee situations are there right now. Um, that includes uh, Central African Republic, Nigeria, South Sudan, Burundi. Um, we're also talking about people who are stateless. So an example of that are Palestinians, LGBTQ refugees. So realizing that although these um, refugee conflicts and refugee refugees themselves, they're not at the front page, um, they're still very worthy of refugee sponsorship and to be remembered and recognized. I think what people really need to know is that refugees do not choose to be refugees. Um, there's this huge misconception that they're choosing to be a refugee or either to be a refugee or to come here. And that's something I really want to emphasize. It's not a choice. Um, it's something they're forced into. So I remember when I first started working in this field, I, I was cautioned to not look in the comment section of news articles um, that are posted online because you see so much prejudice, so much racism. We expect them to arrive in tattered clothing. I've heard, um, you know, my, my neighbor came as a refugee, but he has a nicer car than me. We need to understand as well, because they are refugees, they're not necessarily poor. And for the most part, they, they can be completely educated. You know, they, they could have had great jobs, businesses at home, they could still have money. It doesn't take away from the fact that they had to flee home um, because of um, lack of safety. So they're not coming to Canada for greener pastures. Uh, and I think that's, that's a huge misconception people have. I've had the privilege of taking on the responsibility of the newsletter for the refugee program um, or refugee desk rather. And that means I get to speak with sponsors and 
the last sponsor that I had interviewed had, he's coming from a more rural, small town. He did tell me that if he were to walk with someone who is Caucasian and still a refugee, no one would blink an eye because, of course, it's easier for us to see them as a Canadian versus someone he, he um, they sponsored several people. He really saw the difference in walking with someone, physically walking with someone on the street who did not look like them. And he was actually very, he was worried for their safety. He had to pull them aside and say, if I wasn't with you, I need you to be more cautious of what you're doing, where you are, um, who you're walking with. Um, and that's, that's a reality, not just there, that's a reality everywhere. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's easier for us to welcome someone who looks like us, being kind regardless of that person's sexual orientation, color, social class, right? Just being kind despite all of those things and trying to be aware of the ways that we are um, prejudiced right? Because those things really do exist. Um, we might not be racist per se, um, but even that mm -hmm. expectation that when I sponsor a refugee, they need to not be wearing name brands when they get off the plane, right? Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's seeing the ways that we project onto these people and our own expectations. Yeah. We, we want them to need us. We want them to be less than us. Um, mm or we expect them to be. It sounds like you're inviting us to, uh, to really pay attention to our own biases, the first mm -hmm. thoughts that pop out of our mind as yeah. we look at somebody and to question, you know, where mm -hmm. they came from and what those are about um, and, and to, to, to make those changes internally um, without sort of necessarily judging, uh, judging them, but understanding that we live in, uh, a white supremacist culture and that we've all you know swum in this water and we really need to do the work internally um, to be able to affect change in the world. I most want to see a world where everyone has a place they can call home and I think we take that very much for granted here. Your gift for mission and service will help to continue refugee program staffing.